All right, guys, welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm going to be doing a long-awaited project on my Pioneer 700. That's a battery upgrade. So you got a couple options uh, with your Pioneer 700. But most of us who own one of these understand that the uh, battery that comes with it is way too small uh, for the task at hand, especially if you do any kind of power upgrades. I mean, it's just enough to start the vehicle, but it doesn't even do that good of a job at that. So I have added a ton of upgrades from, you know, a heater to a bunch of lighting, horn, turn signals, all that stuff. Now I just got in, done installing a winch, which is also going to be another big power draw. The problem with the stock battery is obviously is located under the seat here. And there's no more room there to add a larger battery. So what some people do is they use a battery isolator. They add a secondary battery. And that's one way to do it. I don't want to do it that way. I want to get rid of that. That's junk. There's no reason to keep it. So a real good place for a larger battery. If you look under the driver's side seat here, we have this large area here that's not used. So this is the area where I will be installing a larger battery. Okay, so in order to install a battery in this area, we have to build some sort of structure to contain the battery. So some type of battery box. And the best thing to use is obviously metal. We need something uh, rigid. There's a frame here. There's a frame down there. Some people mount the battery boxes down. I wanna keep it up out of the way. All right, so when it comes time to select a battery box, uh, you can completely construct one yourself, or in my case, I'm choosing to start with something that's already been pre-made just to make it a little bit easier. So there are some just bolt-on options, but as far as readability goes, these all-star performance battery boxes are easy to get. You can get them on Amazon. Uh, I'll put links in the description below. So there's two different sizes. There's the 76101, which is the smaller one, which this is about... Uh, 10 inches by 7 inches. Then we've got the larger of the two battery boxes. This is the 76100. This one is a little bit larger. Let's see. So this is about a foot. So either one of these, I just got both of them to show you what we're working with. So obviously, the best spot on the side by side to put a battery box is under the driver's side seat. There's this large open area here. Uh, I've went ahead and already relocated the oil fill. It's right here from the factory. I literally just took the two bolts out. I loosened the clamp on the hose right there, spun it around, and I think I cut about a half inch off the hose just so it wouldn't be so close to the exhaust. I turn it around and I put some slightly longer uh, bolts in. And you could even space this out with washers if you wanted it to look perfect. But I just put some longer bolts in. That's literally all I did. And this is nice and tight. It's at a slight angle now, but who cares? I mean, it's your oil fill. And I use a funnel to fill it anyway, so it doesn't really matter. So obviously, depending on how we mount this, the problem we're gonna have is getting the battery in and out. So once we put this here, I'll try to hold it here so you can see, there really is not enough room come from underneath and get the battery out I mean without taking the side-by-side -side apart you could open the door take the plastic off and take the battery in and out but if you wanted to pop it out because it needed replaced or something it would be nice to be able to go through the top so that's another reason I'm going to use the smaller box and what I will do is just enlarge this hole in the top obviously where the seat mounts we're kind of limited there so we're gonna try to, I'm gonna to try to take more out of the front area here in the side. So what I'm gonna to do to modify this to make it work, my application is the problem with the battery is even though they may fit here, they're taller than this piece here. And obviously these little tabs are in the way. What these boxes are meant for is to weld to the frame like a truck or a car. So you would hang that over the top of the frame and you know weld it in a couple spots. They do make these in a bolt-on uh, configuration. They're a little bit harder to find, though. And they actually have bolt holes. I'm going to kind of basically do the same thing. So with some 
like garage door type channel. And you can do this completely without welding. I'll probably just weld it because I can and then bolt it to the side by side. But um, I'm going to put a little bit of L channel on there. And that will allow this thing to drop down in there far enough uh, to where the battery posts don't stick up into the seat because we need room for the top of the battery. And then obviously our wiring will run over to where the stock battery is. You could do this in a dual battery configuration. I'm going to just completely replace the stock battery. It's junk. It's too small. There's no reason to have it. Um, I'm just going to have one large battery that I don't have to worry about. So I'm going to cut these tabs off right here and here. I will weld the channel on there. And then basically, I will enlarge this opening up here. And then we will bolt the battery box to this cross member here. And it will just hang down inside of here. It's actually not too hard of a project. Uh, some people even mount it down there to the frame. I'd rather have it a little higher up. It's going to protect it from getting so much crap splashed onto it. In fact, I might even put some plastic... You know, obviously this is metal. This is raw metal. This will have to be primed and painted to protect it from rusting. Otherwise, it will just rust instantly. So, and then I'll probably lay like a battery mat, piece of plastic or rubber down inside of there uh, on the bottom of the battery just to keep it from getting too nasty. So these Optum batteries are very expensive. I was able to get a little bit off by shopping around. Um, a lot of places will try to charge you a core charge. You can buy it on Amazon, uh, basically for the going price without a core charge and with free shipping. So I'll leave a link to that below. And then I'll leave a link to the other battery that uh, I considered using below. Um, both of them will work great. It just depends on how much power you actually need. All right, so you can see that this Optum battery fits really good in this smaller tray. So to get this to work, what I'm gonna have to do is cut off these mounting tabs here like I talked about. I'm going to go ahead and cut those off and then I'm going to extend the depth of this because you can see it's pretty high. I haven't quite decided if I want to use the side terminals or the top terminals but that's not really important right now. This is kind of how the mounting system works. All right so here's what I'm using. Uh, I just ha actually happen to have some shorter pieces. You can buy this at like anywhere. Uh, so like I mentioned before you don't once I get these cut off here, you don't actually have to weld this. I'm going to. You could, uh, you know, bolt these together if you did it right. All right, so I've got some markings on here. I measured out my two side pieces. I think 11 inches is going to be pretty good. Uh, here's why. You can see that gives me a decent amount of room above the top of it, so it will actually sit down in there quite a ways, but... Uh, that'll give me plenty of room for the terminals, and uh, if I need to like move the battery around a little bit to get it in and out. All right, so I took a grinder and cut these pieces. I went ahead and just took off another inch and made them 10 inches instead of 11, just because I didn't want it to stick down too far. So there's that. So what I'll do is I'll end up clamping these in place like this, and I'll weld them up. And like I mentioned, I wanted some extra support because all the weight of this battery, obviously this tray can hold it fine, but it will be pulling like this on these arms. And if they're just bolted to the, the frame of the side-by-side -side in one spot on each side, I could see that breaking or you know, pulling out the bolt. So what I'm planning on doing is taking another piece like this, and this will be welded like this, but it'll be cut off on the sides and it will actually bolt up from the bottom into the underside of the square tube frame and it will be welded to here. Like I said, you could just bolt all this stuff together. You could, you know, drill some holes through the back here and run bolts and a nut bolt through the back. I just used a grinder with a cutoff wheel to cut this, but if you have a hacksaw, you can make it work. All right, so after some really crappy welding because I ran out of MIG wire. This is kind of where we're at. I need to clean it up. You can see. Let's see. 
So you can see it just kind of sits right on that crossbar there. That's what we got going on. Get pushed up against there like that. So all I'll have to do is cut the this plastic out about up to here and then square it off over here and maybe just a hair right here. Not a big deal. That'll open it up so we can drop the battery in and out right through the top there. Okay, so now I'm going to primer and paint it. I'm just going to use some self-etching primer, get this cleaned off real good, sand it a little bit more, use some self-etching primer, get a couple coats of that on there. <laughs> And then I'm going to coat it with just a gloss black paint just to match the frame of the side by side. All right, so here I've got it painted, primer to painted. And what I did is I bought a, a group size 24 battery box at Walmart. This is a really tight fit. Then I basically just, you know, pounded this down inside of this battery box. And then what this will do is provide some uh, splash resistance to keep mud and water from just spraying up all over the side of the battery once it's installed up underneath. Kind of like, you know, how the other side is, where, you know, where the computer is and stuff. So I'm going to drill a couple holes in the bottom here, drain holes. That way when water does get in there, it has a way to get out. But uh, I'll put them down in the lower parts here. All right, I finally think I'm ready to get this installed here. So I took, that comes with that battery. It's meant to raise the battery up. So I'm going to use it. See why when it's all done. To put these in before you put this metal piece, before you get it pushed down in here. And then just for good measure, you know, because it seems like it's really tight, but I put a couple self-tappers. One there. On the back here, and those just go through the metal frame. They won't come in con any contact with the battery. I'll go ahead and put a little bit of touch-up paint on those to keep them from rusting. And then I'm going to be ready to go ahead and get this mounted in place in here. All right, so it is a little tricky to get it pushed up through here. You just got to kind of, it just barely fits. Here's what it looks like installed. Got a nice little battery well area. Works out pretty good, actually. Yeah, there is space where, you know, if you're spraying water, it could get down in there. That's why we have our drain holes. Drilled four of them in the bottom. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to secure it through the sides here into this rail. And then I'll probably put, like, at least one on the top here. But just having it physically sitting on there is what's going to make a big difference, you know, when we get the weight of that battery in there. So here's my markings. It's basically two... The edge of the battery box and I've gone out basically as far as I can right here should be just enough all right so I've got it in got everything cut out it's looking good I used some uh, larger self tappers like this a little bit longer I got this one going first up here just to hold everything nice and straight and then put it through here through here that's holding that you know the downward structure Right to the frame so it is very solid it's not going anywhere all right so now suck out all my metal shavings i get everything cleaned up and then we're gonna drop the battery and i'll show you how we wire it up let's see where it's need to take a hair off all right so i lied i didn't have to take any off i just needed to use two hands kind of get the battery pushed in there it's a tight fit but that's good i don't plan on taking it out very often but if i do it will come out to that hole so that's good so now what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna use this uh hold down here basically i have to just like push it underneath i'll get it started on there get those threaded on all right so the, real quick before i wire it up i'm gonna take some of this uh heat barrier slash sound deadening this noico mat I'll be, there'll be a link to all this stuff in the description, if I didn't already say that. I'm going to cut that so um, I can put it around the side of the battery box. Now, if we look down in here, you can see that 
There's a catalytic converter. It's, I mean, it's a little further away than it looks because the box is above it. But I'm going to put that on that side and wrap it around the back side of the battery box just to give this a little bit of extra of a heat protection from the engine since obviously we added the plastic on there. All right, so let's talk a little bit of how we're going to wire this. So I'm going to be using just some standard battery cable terminals for the battery. So I've got this six gauge uh, battery cable. I've got red and black. I've got it in bulk. I've been because I've been using it for the rest of the projects, like the winch on here. So I'm just going to go ahead and use that. Uh, there's not really much to gain with using a larger cable than that, just because the starter on this thing is not going to pull more amps than anywhere close to what six gauge can provide. You could use a little bit larger, like a four gauge or a two gauge, if you want. Um, so what we're going to do is I'm going to custom make some battery cables to go from here to over there where the battery is now. I'm going to disconnect that battery. And what I'm going to do is, in my case, I have, like I said, a winch, some other equipment that I'm installing, high airport stuff that's going to the front. So that stuff is going to be protected by this 100 amp uh, fuse here. So from the battery cable, it will go into this side. From this side, I will then connect. So I'll mount this over there in the battery compartment. And I'll hook up the OEM battery cable where it connects to the battery right to this. So that's how I'm going to tie in the, uh, the system that's here with the new battery for the positive side. And then obviously coming off this side will be the cable going to my winch. Now for the negative side, I just bought it's just a terminal post. And you'll see what it looks like when I pull out of the package here. Basically, just screw it down over there. And then I'll put ring terminal, like a large ring terminal from the battery. And then on the other side, I'll have all my negatives just basically connected over there. And they'll be, you know, a decent ways away from the positive side. So this is now the time if you want to put like some kind of charger, you know, you could wire it into this setup, you know, like so you have a plug that hangs out. It's easy to plug in. There's a million different things. Um, you can do here, uh, you can get just two of these. So if you're not going to run, you know, a winch, some other stuff, just have a red and a black, you know, post like this over there and then mount them over there where the batteries were, and then just make your connections from the factory cables to the battery. Uh, the factory ground cable, it really does just run from the, uh, battery right down to the engine. So you could just replace that cable to this one. There's a bunch of different ways to do it. Uh, I'll show you how I chose to do it uh, after I get these done here. So I'm just going to cut these cables to length, measure them, because I have to assemble them outside, uh, you know, on the ground. So I've got this hammer type crimp device. You basically put your cable in your uh, fitting and then you hammer that down and it crimps it really nice. And I've got all these different crimps here and then the heat shrink. It goes over the cables so I can make myself some nice cables that are the exact length I need without spending a bunch of money and buying them. But that only obviously makes sense if you're going to be doing multiple projects to buy it in bulk like that. Okay, so I've got the side finished up. Got our wires running over here. Now it kind of looks like a mess here, but there's their negative terminal. So we've got all the negatives terminating there. Opposite side. All the positive, the battery positives come in on the bottom of the circuit breaker. It goes out to the solenoid, the input of the solenoid, which is basically just the battery cable. So I just hooked the battery cable directly to that. So we just tied the battery cable from the original battery to the new battery together on the bottom of that. And then the top is just the output to my winch. So it looks pretty good in here. I put it in this uh, tubing and it's gonna run down. And then there's a frame cross member that goes across. You can see I've got a zip tied to it there. That goes across the front. That's gonna keep it off the exhaust or the engine or anything like that. And then it'll pop out over here in the battery compartment. Come up, we'll go under here and then we will terminate it here at the battery. All right, so here's our finished product. Got the battery cables run over here. Everything's connected. Working. 
I like how it turned out. Nice and solid. Fires right up. Works good. Big thing, like I mentioned, listen to the radio all day now without having to worry about the battery going dead. Run my larger accessories and all that other stuff. So there's quite a bit involved in this project and you know it took a little more time than I would have hoped it would have but I like to make sure everything works good and I didn't want to just slop it together so like I said that's really really firm you don't I don't have to worry about it breaking when I'm out on the trails or anything like that uh let's see it's all muddy but from back here this is what you can see sticking down so that's that foil sticking around, I just sprayed, you know, a little bit of a flat black just on the back part of the foil where you see it from behind the thing. That way it doesn't look strange. It's probably, you know, what Honda should have done from the factory is made this a whole area for the battery over here instead of just trying to jam it over there. But worked out good, I think. Be sure to leave a comment below if you've done something similar or if you have any questions. Uh, again, there'll be links in the description to the stuff that I used. Um, if you have any questions or comments, leave them below. Be sure to like the video, subscribe for more, and make sure you hit the bell icon. Be notified when I do other videos. I do a lot of stuff on my Pioneer 700, but I'm kind of all over the place. So appreciate you watching the video. Until next time, we'll see you later.